Do you know where the number one fastest growing church in the world is? Anybody know? Iran. Fastest growing church in the world. Second fastest growing church is Afghanistan. Even now, even since the pullout of American troops that made a mess of their country, second fastest growing church in the world. And I'll tell you why that's happening. Mosques are emptying out. Why? Because God is pouring out his spirit. And Muslims, listen to me, Muslims are receiving dreams of Jesus. Al Jazeera Television, let me get this right, Al Jazeera Television, which is the Muslim television over there, is reporting 16,000 conversions a day. That's crazy. 16,000 a day. That When they brought it up, they brought it up as a crisis. Islam is in crisis. We've got 16,000 Muslims converting to Christianity every day. And 70%, that's seven zero, 70% of those converts, when they are told about Jesus, they say, oh, I know this man, Jesus. I see him in my dreams. It's a phenomenon that missions organizations are studying throughout the locked up Muslim nations throughout sub-Saharan Africa, and they're studying this, and, and he is appearing, and they, he's called the man in white. Are you running into this in Nigeria at all? You're running into it in Nigeria? I'm not making this up, guys. This is, uh, this is mission. These are Baptists that are studying this, guys. They don't even have an explanation. If God could pour out his spirit there... Could he pour out his spirit here? So God wants to raise up Daniels and Josephs and Deborahs and Esthers, people that have the spirit of God on the inside of them, that when God brings you next to these people and they say, oh, I had this weird dream, you're there to listen and you're there to say, you know what? God's speaking to you in that dream. Let me tell you what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you. Come on, we've got to become more prophetic. The church has been pathetic instead of prophetic. We've got to become more prophetic. Not just prophets, but an entire prophetic company. I want to say this, Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. We're all familiar with that. It says God has given some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And most churches have stopped there. Most, most modern cutting edge churches stop there. Listen. They forget that the rest of the verse says, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the work of revival. So in the old paradigm, this is how we thought. Oh, well, an evangelist, that's somebody that's called to win soul. A teacher, that's somebody that, you know, knows how to teach, break down the word, make disciples. A pastor, somebody that counsels and nurtures and cares. A prophet, somebody that brings the word of the Lord, lines people up, prophesies to them. An apostle's a sent one that goes and builds churches or does something like that. Let me say, we've misinterpreted Ephesians 4, 11, and 12. God gave these five not to do all the stuff. God gave these five to equip the goal of Ephesians 4, 11, and 12 is to have an army of well-equipped saints that have had impartation from an evangelist so you know how to win souls, impartation from a teacher so you know how to make disciples, impartation from a pastor so you know how to counsel, nurture, care, and show people the love of Jesus, impartation from a prophet so that you know how to hear the voice of God for yourself, that you know how to interpret dreams and visions so that you know how to give the word of the Lord to others, and that you are called to be a sent one into whatever realm of society, whatever realm of culture God has called you to do, to be a sent one with an apostolic mission to bring, to bring God's kingdom down, God's kingdom power into whatever sphere of authority God has called you to. 
That is Ephesians 4, 11, and 12. How many are willing to say, God, shift me? And so God has called Fresh Start to sustain revival, to marry it to the prophetic, to marry it to reformation. And God's going to need all hands on deck. The days of just coming and receiving were the first seven years. But God's called this to be a place of encounter and experience. And then out of it, a place of equipping, a place of empowering. The Lord told, the Lord, when I prayed for you, the Lord said this. The Lord said, your leaders have given you permission to be more powerful than they are. Is that right? Some of you just went. <laughs> and when Jesus said, I will build my church. I was studying this out last year, and the word build doesn't just mean build life on life even. But you know what that word build also means? It means embolden. I will embolden my ecclesia. And so on this day of Pentecost, I want you to understand what happened is that the Holy Ghost got poured out, and they got emboldened. Because then we see in Acts chapter 3, they're walking along, heading into the temple for the hour of prayer. And they come to the gate. The doorkeepers, the gate. There's a lame man sitting at the gate. And the lame man's begging for alms. Asking for money. And Peter stops and he turns and he looks at him. Listen to what he says. He says, look at me. A lot of the church goes, oh, don't look at me. Just look at Jesus. No, no, no. In order for them to see Jesus, they may have to look at you. Because you are carrying the spirit of Christ on the inside of you. So Peter boldly said, look at me. And it says the man looked at him as though he expected to receive something. You know, you got to have a boldness that says, I've got something the world needs. Look at me. And then he made a decree. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. One translation says, power surged through his body. And he took him by the hand and he leapt up. And he went walking and leaping and praising God. I want you to understand that this is, you're going to see a new season of miracles, notable miracles. One of the definitions of, when it says Paul did notable miracles, that's Ticano dunamis. That's notable miracles, extraordinary miracles. Acts chapter 3 type miracles. How many are willing to let God use you like that? God, get all the ones that didn't raise their hand. 